Welcome back, everybody. We are recapping the week in Guam politics. Now I have here my good friend Sean Gomatato and Dr. Ron McNinch from the University of Guam. Now, gentlemen, the big topic of this week as far as politics go was Senator Michael Sinicholas and his possible future as a member of the Democrat Party of Guam. But Ron, I want to start with you and let's talk about like how often you see candidates uh, either switch sides or you know change political allegiances and everything. Because depending on who you talk to, this can either be a strategic move or it can be you know almost like a holy war move, you know, changing from one religion to another. Yeah, cl the classic uh, uh, definition of a young Turk, it comes from the, the Turkish parliament, I believe. The, the younger members were really, you know, yanking the chain of the older members, and they were viewed as, as radicals or, or people who, who were really not following the party line. In American politics, we, we, we get the term maverick from a, a gentleman named Maverick, who I believe he was from Texas. He he was pushing for very, you know, uh, radical or progressive, however you want to view it, kinds of ideas. And so this is a very old kind of behavior in politics. Good allusion to the Ottoman Empire also by you. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, um, how does this affect, you know, um, not only the impression of party stability and of unity, and, you know, that's been the word that's been echoed so many times this week, but, but when fragmentation happens and everything like that, what does that give to the perception of the voter in the community at large? Well, let's start with the Democratic Party. I mean, in this case, that's where all the focus is at this week. Um, it's focus, um, probably some undue focus. I mean, most of the party um, elders, um, yeah, they might be a little upset. Um, but the, some of the younger Democrats are probably out there saying, uh, did we really want our dirty laundry to be hung out there for all to see? Mm -hmm. um, and it was an interesting thing because they, they had the, the foot on the gas and they were like, we're going to do these things. They were taking a hard line stance. And then when they finally met, they said, well, you know, we're going to consider after the election's over. Um, so getting it out there, people know about it. Uh, it I'm just not sure how that's going to translate um, in a couple of weeks when they have to vote and whether or not that might affect um, the mayoral races how that will affect uh, maybe where all these people sit at the end of the day uh, from 1 to 15. Well, Carlo Branch actually gave us like a really good soundbite that kind of tried to put the feather in the cap of that issue when he said, you know, this is a family issue, we'll handle it within the family, you know, when we're ready for the public to know how this is proceeding and everything like that, you will know. And I think Car Carlo Ron knows like a thing or two about, you know, being able to communicate with both sides. Sure, and the range of families ranges from the Adams family to <laughs> the Waltons. So I mean, <laughs> really, <laughs> it just depends on where. Good night, John Boy. That's right, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's part of the the and it's tolerance, and it's really tolerance of people that are supposed to have tolerance for each other. But sometimes, and and this is the pulling back the veil a little bit on how things really work. People in the same party often will hate each other and that their parties are relationships of convenience rather than relationships of endearment. And so everyone has a greedy self-interest to maintain their political positions because the party is what gives them that, that place on the ballot, yet they might feel a little bit differently. Yeah, Jason, it's supposed to be, a, uh, politics is a game of addition, not a game of subtraction. Mm. So to see what's happened over the past week, um, it will always beg the question, did it do any harm to the addition part when you're trying to say, hey, listen, we're doing all these great things for our people. You know, we're trying to look out for your best interests on the budget, all these things. And then this comes. Is that giving any confidence to those Democratic voters? Uh, will they uh, will they vote or will they just say, ah, never mind, I'll try to get somebody else? And you would think, guys, that part of the organization who's sitting back and you can maybe hear their laughter coming all the way from downtown is the Republican Party because they just say, you know, OK. You know, go ahead and tear yourselves apart and everything. We're just going to continue to project our message that, that we are unified and we are one collective voice while you guys, you know, continue to publicly squabble. Yeah, right. How do you handle that or how right. do you nip that in the bud? Right, right now they're saying, all right, great, they're shooting in the tents. Time for us to go out there and go canvas and tell everybody, hey, we're the party of unity. We are the guys that are out there doing our best work for you. Uh, if you want to have anything else, go check out the other guys. They're still shooting in the tent. And this is an opportunity, Ron, I would assume, for the Republicans to try and turn some traditional Democrat voters and just say, hey, you know, if you want to get in our way of thinking and everything, you know, like things are okay over here on this side of the pool, while that other side, you know, the water might be a little warm. Sure. I think we are the lesser dysfunctional group. And sometimes right. if we're lesser dysfunctional, we can be more effective policy-wise. We can serve you better because we don't fight as much. This truly is trench warfare when, when you take a look at it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So how, how do we move forward from this? And then, Sean, you've, you've dealt as a member of uh, Felix Camacho's administration, you know, crisis management and, you know, um, dousing fires and everything like that. Were you in charge of this 
squabble and everything like that, how would you actually diffuse this? We're going to need to change the message like right now. We need to find something that will say, hey, listen, uh, we all can get behind an issue. One that will get voters to say okay, and also that they'll back them at the polls. And Ron, as a prognosticator of politics on Guam, and probably like, you know, the soothsayer of our profession, uh, what do you look for next and what do you think is coming up? Well, basically, if the Democrats aren't careful, they could lose their majority over this. And that's the bottom line is if you have the majority, you want to keep the majority. And if you're in the minority, you want the majority. And so the game is over the majority. And if, this, if, if the Democrats aren't careful, they're going to uh, topple or capsize their little vote of statesmanship and, and sink their majority. And they better be careful. And it also affect in two years when the election for governor happens. Well, the political gamesmanship is really interesting. So, guys, we always appreciate your insight on exactly how this is playing out. All right, please stay tuned, everybody. We are back right after this.